welcome to this week's edition of New York's Critics. Today we will be writing for the Kardashians Daily. Today we're reviewing the film adaptation of The Book Thief, originally written by Marcus Zusak and now directed by Brian Carsable. You can watch this movie for free on Hulu and Disney Plus while it is also featured on other platforms such as Prime Video and YouTube for $3.99. This story follows the hardships and life of a young girl named Lisa Meninger and her foster family throughout World War II. The Book Thief features an alluring plot, ironic conflict, and formidable narrator that all teach us lessons about morality and humanity. As I've said before, the movie features a very intriguing plot that draws the audience into the story. In addition, the directors of this film also utilize many film devices, such as music and dramatic effects that allows the audience to better experience the events of the film. For example, in the beginning of the plot, the film captures the viewer's attention through killing off Liesl's brother, followed by the rest of her family being taken away as well leading to Liesl's gaining a new family while also meeting a, fam a new boy named Rudy. Although the sequence of events all happens within a couple of minutes in time span, the two events provide a sharp contrast to each other. This hooks the audience to into the story and makes them curious about what will happen next in the story. Another aspect I really enjoyed about this film was its ironic conflict. Although the film takes place during a time where Adolf Hitler and the Nazis were supposed to be strongly supported and loved by all German citizens, most of the story's main characters all express some level of rebellion against this force. Our main character, Liesl, displayed rebellion in this film when she picked up a book that was supposed to burn. Despite knowing better in the heat of the moment, she followed her heart and did what she felt was right. Even at a young age, Liesl knew that it was wrong to follow the Nazi party. This is a great example of the ironic conflicts in the plot and is demonstrative of an issue of character versus society. Even though children of this society often mirror the actions of ad adults, Liesl's actions show the opposite and exemplify subtle rebellion. It is in these details that we can see the society overall and the sharp contrast that characters like Liesl provide in her beliefs. One last factor I want to go over today is the narrator of this film. He introduces himself as Death, and this alone captures the viewer's attention as the film continues to hit tint as his brutal narration. During the movie, Death brings up Liesl's interesting soul. Seeing as he is Death, this foreshadows the mounds of death and loss that are associated with her. Through this film, we see this through her brother's death in the beginning and her town's tragedy in the end. Thus, narration and simple existence in this film gives a way deeper complexity in the story, as well as improvement of the story overall. Not only does Death's godlike perspective give insight on everyone's thoughts, but it also gives an intimidating view on how life, fleeting life can be. I think so far you summed up the plot really well and talked about very important and special aspects that makes this film really different. However, after reading the novel and watching the movie, I have a bit of a different take on the issue. Mm -hmm. I found that this film adaptation had really rushed pacing, had a lot of character development issues, and a lack of historical accuracy. When compared to the novel, the spread of events as well as the overall pacing of the film was definitely a bit off-key. The novel offered consistent plot development as well as character development, but the movie was unable to do that due to the nature of this genre of media. In the end, this caused several changes to the storyline that detracted from the overall initial depth and clarity that the novel offered. One significant alteration made in the film was Esau Herman and Lethal's relationship. In the book, they had a rather complicated relationship with Lethal experiencing both borderline poverty, while Yitha had more than enough money but struggled with what appeared to be depression. In the novel, her depression translates to mood swings and unreasonable behavior, but these details of her characterization were completely glossed over in the film. Although Yusuf's character remained mostly depressed and as a grieving mother just like in the novel, she was always happy to see Lethal in the film. This definitely does not ha happen in the novel because of the amount of time that the author is able to give in her characterization. Although this version of their relationship makes the seemingly more heartfelt moments, but it deprives the viewer of the original depth and prevalence of their relationship as it held several rel relevances to important details such as classism and systemic wealth gaps. On a slightly different note, something else I found really interesting about this film that also had to do with the pacing was the presence of death. 
Well, you argue that he was a formidable narrator and had a lot of presence in the film. I argue a completely different story because upon reading the novel, you will find that in the novel, he was there throughout the entire story. He was able to explain the in and out of every single death and the stories behind it. However, in the novel, he However, in the film, he only appeared for very brief moments in the beginning and end of the story. Yeah, well, they were very important moments. I'm sure they were. Mm-hmm. But his presence was still cut out. Okay, well, when he was there, it was actually very important because he was able to actually identify what some of those souls were thinking before they even died. Well, this happened in the novel. I'm so sorry you didn't pay enough Well, we're reviewing the film. And I'm criticizing it. Whatever. Honestly, like I'm this close to leaving. Sure. Honestly, Kendall, this is why I never spend any time with you. I'm sure that's why. Ugh. Anyway. Additionally, the film adaptation of this novel also falls short in character development, framing many people as one-dimensional characters that had little depth or complicity. Although the movie was definitely a piece of art, when compared to the novel, it was simply unable to match the emotional depth and humanity of the original plot. Although the film displayed anti-Nazism and framed the Nazi party as the overarching villain of the story, its portrayal of the Nazi officers was simply too simplistic. Rather than giving each officer their own distinctions, the filmmakers made them all to fit the same mold and threw in the most common examples of the Nazi movement, such as book burnings and Jewish acts of Jewish persecutions, but failed to elaborate on each individual officer's internal process on the issue on screen due to a lack of a good narration as aforementioned. Instead of demonstrating the full extent of their actions and motives like the book portrays, the film makes the Nazi officers mix out to be one-dimensional cartoonish villains and only throws in hints of their impacts when compared to the real historical tragedy. Given the significance of their role in the story, this oversimplification undermines the depth and clarity of the entire plot. One last flaw that I want to touch on today would be the film's ignorance towards historical accuracy. In addition to the factors that I've mentioned before, the film also fails to capture the real realistic perception of Nazism and the Holocaust. Overall, this oversight causes misleading perceptions for its audiences about the original novel as well as the historical event as a whole. Instead of following the book and portraying the harsh reality of living during the war, the movie also washes away the majority of dangers and rigorousness of life. In fact, the movie's gorgeous cinematography turns mulching into a lively wonderland, ignoring the ugliness of its historical context. Throughout most of the film, there wasn't much attention to the tragedy of the Nazi movement. We can clearly see the tame depiction of the setting, giving it the possibility of becoming a cozy drop back for any coming of age movie. Despite its subject matter being one of the most tragic historical events, the film's narrative flow and comforting familiarity belongs to one of the most beloved fairy tales. The film's adaptation could have been much more impactful if the director had not shied away from depicting the harsh realities of wartime. To sum up what I said so far, I think the film adaptation of The Book Thief fails to live up to the power and complicity of its source material. It's very clear that this live ver action version has issues with pacing, which causes a rushed plot, detraction from the important events that the novel features, and a lack of character development, along with a fatal failure to have a historically accurate film, taking away the realistic perception of the Holocaust for its audiences. These factors all take away from the story's emotional impact, intellectual depth, as well as the novel's profound insight into humanity. While the film may appeal to a casual viewer looking for a sentimental World War II film, its flaw simply overpowers the film's strength and I would definitely not recommend watching it. Well, I actually disagree, Kendall. The simple prospect of it being narrated by death itself is something that certainly does more than hook the viewers through its ability to determine a soul's lost hopes and thoughts, along with the ironic conflict, which I'm so on their side because who would not be? I mean, it's certainly not as ironic as you having updated a Puerto Rican reggaeton musician when you can't even speak Spanish. Well, Alex, I don't spend 23 hours a day calling at my hair extensions. Oh my god, will you look in the mirror? I cannot believe you right now. Honestly, I'm so done. <laughs> Cornelius! She's so dramatic. 
Like, she never gets along with her sisters, even though I'm the angel. <laughs> she honestly just makes my life harder. Like, I can't even anymore. Like, oh my god, she fights with everyone, and it's so annoying. <laughs> anyway, in, gar in regards to the plot, yes, it may be rushed. However, it is also alluring through the losses, tragedies, and happy memories Liesl experiences throughout the film. Not only that, but it also has an ironic conflict between the characters and society that really does make the characters all that much more admirable. The story is wholesome, tragic, and informative to an extent. And while it isn't historically accurate, it really does give important life lessons and should not be taken for granted. For those reasons, I would recommend the book. <sighs> Thanks for watching this week's edition of New York's Critics. And please join us for the next week when we review Little Woman, an award-winning movie directed by Greta Gorwick.